Hey guys, welcome back. This is Return to Tennis. I'm Aaron. Thanks for returning. Uh, doesn't look too bad out today. We're going to get out and hit a little bit. Uh, try to get ready for the UTR event this weekend. So, got something else that I'm working on today. I've already doctored it up. I'm going to show it to you here in a second. So with my job, I drive around a lot, like to other cities and other parts of the state. Usually within about 30 to 90 miles of my home. And when I'm out, I got some free time here and there, you know, or during lunch. I like to check out the local sporting goods stores and see if they have anything uh, interesting in the tennis departments. Um, recently, I've been in Springfield, Ohio, which is about 35 miles from Columbus. The only thing they had there was a Dunham sporting goods store, and it was abysmal. The selection of tennis equipment and tennis gear there was absolutely horrendous. Um, it was on par with what you would find at Walmart. So I guess, but their only competitor in the area is Walmart. So, I mean, I guess there's no real reason to have a large quantity of quality equipment, even though you are a sporting goods store. Uh, so today I was like, well, what, you know, I got some time at lunch. What can we do? What's what's nearby? Well, in Columbus, where I live, they have uh, plating and sports, which are used sporting goods stores. You can go in and sell your old equipment for a price or trade it on something you want. I've checked out a couple of the stores here in Columbus. The racket selection was slim. Every once in a while, you'd find something in there that was kind of, of a higher quality product, but they're usually pretty bad beat up. Uh, I found a couple Technofiber... Uh, RS, I think the T fights, like 290 grams, 295 grams. Uh, nice rackets, uh, for sure, but they were horribly beat up. Like I, they're so bad, I I would be worried that they would crack if I restrung them. They were pretty badly abused. But other than that, I haven't really found anything at the stores here. So today I was kind of out, and about 30 minutes away from where I was in Springfield was a plating and sports, and I said, ah, you know, smaller area. Who knows what's there? Let's let's just go look. Got there, was pleasantly surprised. Uh, the number of rackets they had on the wall was pretty good. They had a lot hanging. A lot of the same stuff you'd see, cheaper bottom end starter rackets that you'd get at Walmart for like 25 bucks. But mixed in, they had some older Prince rackets from the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, they had a Wilson Sting, I think. We had the little crossbar in the throat. They had one of those. They had a couple Spaldings. I hadn't seen that in forever. They had a Spalding Professional 95. And a Spalding was just labeled Spalding Graphite. Um, they had an old model Pro Kenix that had the kind of the tube-shaped throat and tube-shaped frame. It was an older racket. They had... Uh, the Prince, they had two or three models of a Prince Synergy from the late 80s, early 90s. I think it was the early 90s. That's when Capriotti first started playing. I think she played with a Synergy. Um, I'm not a big fan of Prince, so I wasn't really interested in those. They had a couple of Wilson Hammers. Wide bodies. New, fairly recent models, I'd say within the last 10 years or so. They were in pretty good condition. Not a fan of the Hammers either. I had a, a Wilson Hammer when it first came out, wide body, 110 square inch head, massive power. I, I, I didn't like it. It was too much. So I kept digging, and eventually I came across uh, a little bit of a diamond in the rough. Not what I was hoping to find. I was really kind of hoping I'd find a Yonix, but then no Yonix to be found. But what I did find, interestingly enough, was a vocal a vocal DNX Power Bridge 8. Uh, this probably is about 10 to 13 years old, I'm guessing. Um, furthermore, there were two of them. There was one at 4 and 3 eighths grip and one at 4 and a half grip. I'm a 4 and a half. I got it. It cost me like 45 bucks. Uh, it's not too banged up. It's in pretty good shape. There's some scuffing on the on the you know the protective part above the on the on the head. There's a little bit of scratching on the sides at 3 and 9, but it's in really good condition for a used racket at 45 bucks. It has under the bottom, it says, Sensor Tour 
handle system there. I don't know what that is. It's not, it, there, it doesn't look like it can be removed. There's no uh, trap door on it. But what we're going to do, uh, if the weather, if the courts are dry out there, um, we're going to hit it today. I'm not going to restring it. I'm not going to drop 20 bucks in, in string that I have into a $45 racket that I have no idea what it's going to do. It's 100 square inches. Um, let's get a weight. I got the scale here with me. Let me see if I can flip this around and show you what's going on here. 317 grams. Now, uh, I added a Selenko overgrip because the grip was pretty bad. It's strung. So we're at 3 grams right now. That's going to be the lightest racket I have available to me. So we're going to try it out. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, I don't know what kind of strings these are. They're poly. Uh, they're tight. They are really tight. It's strung pretty tight. Uh, they're a little chewed up in the center, but I don't think they're going to break. So we're going to go out and just see how it goes. We'll see you guys in a little bit. So here we go. First ball out the gate. Smacked it. This is the vocal power bridge. Eight. That wasn't bad. Um, for a really light racket that I've never hit before with old chewed up strings at a tension I'm unfamiliar with, it wasn't that bad. Um, very maneuverable, moved really well. There was a decent backhand, uh, it was not comfortable to hit. I found I had a lot of success uh, hitting forehands with this. I mean, as much success, if not more success, than I did with any of my other rackets. Once, once I found a rhythm. It took me a minute to get used to it. Uh, it's for something I've never hit before. Uh, but once I got kind of used to the rhythm, my forehands were really good. Backhands, on the other hand. Or is it another story? I framed a lot of these balls. Even though, even if I hit them in, they looked like they were decent. I did not catch a lot of them center. I caught, I caught a lot of them on the frame. Uh, vibration on this one was bad. I could feel it pretty quick. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with how light the racket is. Uh, not a bad stick at all. I mean, it's good enough that I'll probably... Uh, some point in the future is restring it and re-hit it with a, a different string in there um, maybe with my elbows a little better but I did enjoy hitting forehands with it I actually hit some a, a, a series of them once I got a rhythm for it I hit some really nice ones which now makes me wonder maybe part of my issue is not that my rackets are too light that maybe they're too heavy uh, but for sure hitting the backhands with this was not fun uh, too much vibration just you know and me trying to figure out how to hit a two-handed backhand in general is a, is a chore right now so but forehands were kind of smooth once I got going with it I actually liked it I'm probably going to restring this uh, with a wasabi red from Toro Line to give it a try. The spin string. But for 45 bucks, uh, considering the condition the racket is in, which is really nice, it's very few scratches or chips. I mean, it was a good find. $45 is, is I mean, you can't beat that for what you get here. This is a nice racket. This vocal is decent. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I really I enjoyed hitting it. Oddly enough, I could not find a lot of reviews of this racket. I could find it reviewed at 315 grams, but I could not find any reviews at 295, which I thought was kind of weird. But that's it, guys. I mean, I'm going to keep an eye out next time I'm in the stores, uh, see if I can catch another diamond in the rough kind of deal. Uh, 
Oh my gosh, man, I shaved that one bad. And that was just all timing on my part. Uh, I'm hoping to eventually come across a Yonix that's in good shape, but no, no luck so far. But that's all for tonight, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Return to Tennis. Wishing you many happy returns. As long as they don't look like that last ball. And we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.